Hi everyone, let's solve the second question from today's weekly contest that is count collisions of monkeys on a polygon. There is a regular convex polygon with n vertices and the vertices are labeled from 0 to n minus 1 in a clockwise direction and each vertex has exactly one monkey sitting on it, right? And the following figure shows what a convex polygon of six vertices looks like. Now each monkey moves simultaneously to a neighboring vertex. A neighboring vertex for a vertex i can be the vertex i plus 1 modulo n in the clockwise direction or the vertex i minus uh, 1 plus n modulo n in the counterclockwise direction. A collision happens if at least two monkeys reside on the same vertex after the movement and we have to return the number of ways the monkeys can move so that at least one collision happens since the answer may be very large return it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Note that each monkey can only move once. Okay, so let's see what the question um, means. So we are given a polygon, right? We are given n, so we form a, a polygon of, let's say n is given us to be 3, right? So we, we form a polygon of 3 vertices. It will look like this. Okay, now we have this uh, polygon. Now on each of its vertex, right? Here and here and here. So let's name it 0, uh, 1 and 2. Right, so we have this, and on 0, 1, 2, these vertices on each and every vertex, one monkey is sitting. Now, that monkey can move either in this direction or either in this direction. Right, so what we have to do is we have to calculate the number of collisions that will happen. Now, collision happens if there are at least two monkeys sitting on a vertex on a particular vertex. Now, as you can see. A monkey can move either in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, right? So, in how many ways, like, uh, these monkeys are changing the direction, right? So, there are two ways, right? So, one monkey, is, one monkey has two choices, to move either to this direction or to this direction. And this is for each and every monkey sitting on these vertices. So, how many monkeys are there? There are n monkeys. So, that means... For each and every monkey, we have two choices. So we have to multiply 2 n times. Right? So we'll get 2 raised power n. So these are the number of ways in which all these monkeys can move. Now we have to find the number of ways in which these monkeys, are, because of the movements they are making, they collide. Right? So these are the number of ways the monkeys can move. Now let's say all the monkeys together move to the clockwise direction or all the monkeys together move in the anti-clockwise direction. In this case, there will be no collision, right? In only these two conditions, there won't be any collision. Like if any monkey moves in opposite direction to any other monkey, then there will be a collision, right? That is what we are calling a collision. So if all of them together move to this clockwise direction or all of them together move to the anti-clockwise direction in only these two cases the monkeys will not be colliding right so if we subtract two so can we say that these are the number of ways in which monkeys uh, will collide right so this is what we have to return now the catch is uh, the constraint given to us is 3 can be between uh, n can be between 3 to 10 raised power 9 right and so 2 raised power 10 raised power 9 will be a very big number right it can be very big so that is why we have to calculate the answer modulo of something now we have to calculate modulo of 10 raised power 9 plus 7 okay so, so this is modular multiplication so uh, there is a technique to perform modular multiplication right so that is um, called Fermat's theorem theorem okay so what it says is that if um, if the number okay so let's say we have a mod m okay this is what is given to us right if this modulo m if it is a prime number, then we will be getting A here, right? So, 
in modular multiplication what happens is we have to basically calculate let's say we have to calculate 2 into 2 mod something right let's say value so it is equal to 2 mod value okay into 2 mod value mod value so this is how we um, calculate it now um, this will uh, give us complexity of o n right so there is even a shorter method to calculate it so i'll there is an uh, code forces article about that so there you can find the logic of it that is if n um, here you can see right it would still take too long right therefore there is a, a trick known as exponentiation by squaring right so this is uh, what is being done in Fermat's theorem now note that n is odd right if n will be odd right if x to the power n this n will be odd then this is how we calculate by squaring and if n is even then we will be calculating it uh, this way right so this will be giving us a complexity of o of uh, log of n right because we are constantly will be dividing by 2 right so what i have done is i have created a separate function for calculating the modular multiplication right that is what we are doing to raise power n and then what we are returning we are returning 2 raise power n minus 2 right so let's see the code i'll link this article in the description let's see the code so basically this is the function for this is the modular power okay so as i said what we are doing we are calculating mod and then we are dividing we are using the squaring technique right so we are dividing v by uh, 2 each time right whatever the value of n is given to us okay so this way this is o of log n this function called m power and here in uh, this is constant time because we are only calling m power and we are subtracting minus 2 as we saw because uh, there will be only two cases where the monkey uh, will not collide right and th then we are simply returning the answer now we are adding answer uh, mod uh, answer plus equal to mod here because uh, let's say we get a negative value right so we don't need negative values in the answer that can't be possible so that is why we have to add mod and then we have again done the modulo and that is what we are returning so i hope you have understood the problem and the time complexity of this problem is simply o of log n